the moment he was first introduced in the Naruto series, Kabuto was a character surrounded by an aura of mystery. Was he a good guy? Was he fodder? And then we found out he was Orochimaru's servant. Early on in the series, Orochimaru stated that Kabuto was on par with Kakashi skill-wise, the very same Kakashi who was recognized by the great nations as being an absolute monster in battle. Around volume 18 of the series, we see Kabuto fight with Tsunade and Shizune. Kabuto held his own in those fights, displaying a prodigy level of talent like when Tsunade messed up the electrical impulses in his body and forced Kabuto to move his pinky in order to move his neck and etc. Any guy who was able to learn sage mode and hold off two of the most powerful Uchiha ever has to be pretty powerful, right? Well, in today's Sound Village edition of the True Power series, I'm going to break down the true power of Kabuto. Upon first glance, it's really easy to look down at Kabuto as being fodder. After all, the guy comes off like an anime nerd who wears glasses, the typical anime weak guy. But during the tuning exams, he showed hints of what he was truly capable of. By the time he fights Kakashi, he managed to fool Kakashi using a the jutsu. They caught him by surprise, and during the battle with Tsunade, after playing psychological warfare on her, which, keep in mind, Kabuto is a ninja, so that is a pretty big deal, Kabuto took a full-on Rasengan from Naruto and was able to survive it due to the jutsu that he created, and Kabuto had the energy to talk trash after the fact, despite the fact the jutsu he used to survive the Rasengan took a lot of his chakra. There are things in the series very early on, in the first 30 volumes, that shows us that Kabuto by this point has clearly gone past the level of a special Jonin. However, you could argue he's not quite at a Kage level, but some people say he was probably close during this point. It makes sense when you consider that on top of being a medical ninja with insane chakra control, Kabuto has three changes in chakra nature and mastery over Ying and Yang release Jutsu. His chakra natures are earth, water, and wind release. From a very young age, Kabuto's talent became very apparent, which is why people like Orochimaru and Danzo went out of the way to get a hold of him. By the time of the fourth great ninja war, Kabuto's skills were on full display. Not only did he manage to modify his body to the point where his chakra signature itself had drastically changed and it made it really difficult for people to track him if they are familiar with his previous chakra signature, but he also far surpassed the Edo Tensei of both Orochimaru and Tobiramu Senju, with Tobirama being the creator of the Edo Tensei. Just looking at the modifications he made to his body, Kabuto became a custom created character. He had Suigetsu's clan's secret jutsu of being able to liquefy his body. He had Kari and Uzumaki's natural healing ability. He had Jugo's Keke Genkai to casually absorb nature energy at all times, even when he's moving. And if he has access to the DNA of the person, he can gain their powers in Keke Genkai if he works it into the navel of his body. His chakra control is a no-brainer when you look at it. Medical ninjutsu already requires precise chakra control, especially when you use the chakra scalpels, which can be used to attack your enemy. However, let's look at his advancements of the Edo Tensei to show why he's a skill with chakra control as well as his talent in general. Tobirama Senju, he invented the Edo Tensei, but he couldn't control multiple people at once, let alone hundreds of dozens of people like Kabuto did. Orochimaru couldn't bring Edo Tensei back to near their full power until he absorbed the information from Kabuto. While Kabuto didn't have the Edo Tensei at near 100% power, their full power was massively higher than what Orochimaru was originally able to produce and close enough to the 100% that Kabuto made the claim that people are back at full power. Kabuto was also able to control all of these Edo Tensei if he focused on it, though he needed to be in a secluded space where he couldn't be interrupted while he did so. Kabuto was also able to completely take over an incredibly powerful ninja like Nagato and Itachi if he focused on it, while also having thousands of Edo Tensei fighting the war. Another underrated aspect of Kabuto's character is his Genjutsu. His Genjutsu was good enough that it gave Sasuke and Itachi trouble. Literally, the only reason they were able to break out of his Genjutsu 
was that they had to use Sharingan Genjutsu, which is an more advanced form of Genjutsu, and in order to break free of it, they needed one another to do so, which means that they're fighting Kabuto alone, they likely wouldn't have been able to break out of the Genjutsu. Now, when Kabuto takes bits and pieces of people, he doesn't just copy their ninjutsu, but instead, he builds on it in ways that makes it his own jutsu. When he took the twin demon jutsu from Sakon and his brother, he created a copy of Sakon, and he uses the copy in battle. This was how he was able to use key ninjutsu of all of the Sound 5. When he combined Orochimaru's snake shedding jutsu with Suigetsu's hydrification jutsu, it produced the body fluid shedding jutsu. This allows Kabuto to liquefy himself, the snakes that he controls, and all things that he's connected to. When he does this, he also leaves behind traces of his chakra, which can be used to fool the Byakugan and the Sharingan, making it really difficult to attack Kabuto. He also used this jutsu to regenerate from attacks when he liquefies his body, and he's able to protect himself from sound vibrations that might be used to harm him. Kabuto can also produce chakra-absorbing snakes that tighten their grip around the target and drain away their chakra, though this is something that wasn't in the manga and is only anime only. However, I thought it was something that needed to be incorporated into this video. He also has the chakra draining seal that he places on his target. It drains them of their own chakra and then it transfers it to Kabuto, which is absolutely insane when you think about it. Kabuto can also create snake clones, which allow him to create small snakes that multiply at a rapid rate and form either a large snake for him to control or a clone of Kabuto to use in battle. Now, these aren't your typical clones, like say a water clone or a wood clone. These clones have a 48 hour shelf life and they can copy chakra signatures, which is also really impressive. Kabuto can also combine this with another jutsu to have snakes shoot out lightning to attack his enemies. Kabuto can also use Kimimaru's Bracken Dance, which is used when he creates thousands of sharp blades made out of bone that rise from the ground and impale his enemy. Kabuto can also use the Dead Soul Jutsu, which he uses to erase the body odor, and he uses his chakra to control a dead body, giving the corpse a beating heart while he's controlling it. These corpses, despite being controlled by Kabuto, can also still use the jutsu from when they were alive. He can also use the demonic flute jutsu, which when he uses this genjutsu, he wraps his enemy in snakes and uses the sound genjutsu to attack his enemies, forcing them to see hallucinations and wear down on their mental mind state until they have a mental breakdown. He can also use Jirobo's earth release jutsu to shift the earth in battle to avoid attacks and to hide himself. He can also use the hiding like a mole jutsu to travel underground while sensing the magnetic force around him. He can track his enemy to launch a surprise attack as well as sense whatever's happening on the surface level without having to pop out of the surface. And after he uses this jutsu, Kabuto can restore the earth that he tunneled through making it go back to his previous state, making it impossible to tell whether or not he had just been there. Now the striking shadow snake summons snakes from Kabuto's sleeves and they attack his enemy. These snakes can also carry poison to slow down their movements and Kabuto can use these snakes as a way to pull himself from long distances or he can use it to pull his enemy closer to him or he can use it to bind the movements of his enemy. Kabuto can also control the reflection of light that hits his body when he uses the camouflage jutsu which allows him to become invisible, hiding even his breaths that he takes in cold areas and it allows him to sneak up on anybody who doesn't have acute hearing or a heightened sense of smell or a Byakugan or a Sharingan that allows them to see chakra. Now, he can also use Orochimaru's replacement jutsu, which is absolutely broken. This is essentially Kabuto creating an entire new body after his original body sustains a deadly attack, and after making the body throw himself up, Kabuto is able to shed the skin of his original. Kabuto is also able to avoid the injuries that he would have sustained, though this takes an enormous amount of his chakra, which means this jutsu can't be used multiple times in a battle unless you have an enormous amount of chakra and insane chakra control on top of it. Now, we're getting to the good part here. 
Kabuto Sage Mode. Now, I'll have to tell you guys to be able to say, like, Kabuto Sage Mode is absolutely busted. Kabuto Sage Mode is on a whole different level than Naruto Sage Mode. Kabuto, when he enters Sage Mode, gets the same insane stat boost that Naruto got. But he's able to use nature energy in a way that it breathes life into inorganic substances. This allows him to alter the environment and use it to attack his enemy. Even the Sharingan has trouble with this jutsu. Only the Sage Mode that Kabuto uses can use this jutsu and the only thing being shown powerful enough to counter this is when Sasuke and Itachi use a Matarasu. Now the Sage Art White Rage Jutsu shoots out a massive dragon from its mouth and it carries an orb in its claw. The dragon wraps itself around the orb and releases a blinding light that not even the Sharingan can see through and it emits an immense sound that cripples the enemy into paralysis as soon as they hear it. Kabuto can also also turn the lower half of his body into a literal snake tail that boosts up his speed and agility in battle. Similar to the same way that Orochimaru used the Jutsu when he fought against Four Tails Naruto. Kabuto can also use the body modification Jutsu to stretch and bend his body as he sees fit by dislocating the joints in his body and using chakra to manipulate his limbs. Kabuto can also create webs that are strong enough that not only is it strong enough that a Matsurasu is the only thing that can burn through it, but it's also a really busted jutsu. One of the reasons Kabuto can use this is due to the transmission distance shadow jutsu, which allows him to take the DNA of a person he absorbed and use all of their jutsu, which also includes a keke genkai. So imagine if you absorb somebody that has the Sharingan. Now you're probably wondering, was Kabuto going to do this with Sasuke? And there's no confirmation, but I think that's one of the reasons he wanted Sasuke's body. His Temple of Narana jutsu produces white feathers that places the enemy under a genjutsu. When Kabuto used this in part one, he placed an entire stadium under genjutsu almost immediately. Kabuto can also use the water vortex jutsu, which hits his target with full force of a waterfall when he shoots it from his mouth. His water bullet jutsu shoots a large torrent of water that can strike his enemy with enormous force upon impact. The water dragon bullet jutsu forms when he collects chakra and the chakra that he gets transforms itself into a dragon and it shoots itself at his enemy in a dragon shaped water attack that deals enormous physical damage and depending on how much chakra Kabuto is gathering the more powerful the attack will become. Finally without even using Karin Uzumaki's healing Kabuto has his own overpowered healing jutsu that is really similar to the one that Sakura and Tsunade use. Kabuto's jutsu allows him to activate and reproduce his cells at will however he needs time to start it up and when Kabuto is able to anticipate his enemy's attacks very early on, Kabuto can use this attack to nullify most of the damage that he receives, which is why he was able to survive Naruto's fully formed Rasengan at point blank range. This jutsu is impressive enough that Tsunade took note of it and used it to help Rock Lee with his surgery. So as you guys can see, if you don't have a dojutsu like the Sharingan or the Byakugan, Fighting Kabuto is going to be extremely difficult, especially if he goes into Sage Mode. Even though a Dojutsu might not be able to bring down Kabuto alone, unless you have Itachi, who suddenly whips out the second most overpowered Genjutsu in the entire Naruto series, Kabuto is going to be a handful for anybody except for maybe the upper tier. Now, what did you guys think about Kabuto's true power? Let me know down in the comment section below. But as always, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and never forget that Senju. DNA is love, send you DNA is life. Have an awesome day.